You are killing your plant if you do this. It might seem like misting your indoor plant is the way to go, but really it's not. It's doing much more harm than good. I know it's the go-to trick we all thought would turn our homes into tropical rainforests, along with a few other hacks you might be familiar with, but misting is not the hero we all hoped for. Before we go further, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on that in a jiffy. So when I first started out on my plant journey, before I had a collection of 200 plants, misting was one of those things I did religiously. Every day, I'd grab my trusty spray bottle and give my plants a shower, thinking that I was boosting their humidity and making them feel all rainforesty. Plants like Calathea, Monstera or Ferns thrive in humid environments, right? So it seems logical to give them a spritz to replicate that, right? Well, it turns out, at best, I was just wasting my time and making a soggy mess, and at worst, killing my green misters. Contrary to what John next door says, misting doesn't increase humidity in any meaningful way. Sure, it might make you feel like you're doing something great, but the effect is pretty short-lived. The water droplets evaporate in minutes, leaving your plant's leaves exactly where they were before, humidity-wise. Imagine going out on a hot sunny day and splashing your face with water and expecting that to keep you cool for hours. It's really not going to do the job, is it? And neither does misting for your plants. So that's why it's a waste of time, but what about this killing malarkey I scared you with at the beginning of this video? Before we go there, let me just point you in a direction of my free plant troubleshooting handbook you can nab by checking out the description down below. It'll save your bacon when problems start rearing their ugly head. So, it's all to do with fungus, my plant friend. Misting actually increases the chances of fungal infections. Not for you, for your plants. Why? Because when those tiny droplets sit on your plant's leaves and don't evaporate fast enough, they create a perfect breeding ground for fungus and bacteria. I've had plants develop weird brown spots plenty of times after over-enthusiastically misting them with my spray bottle. I thought I was helping by doing this, but no. I was just giving fungus an all-inclusive holiday package. I've had this happen with a peace lily that I used to mist all the time because, you know, that's what you're meant to do with a peace lily, right? Well, one day I noticed small black spots on the leaves. Bummer, must be a bug issue, right? No, after a little digging, I learned it was fungus leaf spot thanks to my daily misting ritual. The poor lass, she's been through the ringer with me, mainly because she's my oldest plant and I love to try new things out on her. But what about rain, I hear you cry? If water droplets on leaves were such a problem, our world would be a barren wasteland, surely? Well, my plant friend, our indoor plant cousins have much less access to air than their outdoor brethren. Fewer air changes indoors means moisture takes much longer to dry out, and this is bad news for our green misters. Wet leaves combined with still air are a recipe for bacterial infections because bacteria thrives in warm, moist environments, and misting practically rolls out the red carpet for them. Another issue with misting that no one talks about enough is the quality of water you are using. If you're using tap water, chances are it's loaded with minerals, especially if you live in an area with hard water. When you mist your plants with this mineral-heavy water, it leaves behind the coating that can build up on the leaves over time, leaving white spots or a film that stops the plant from being able to soak up the vitamin D. This build-up isn't just ugly, and can be a nightmare for your plant's ability to photosynthesize properly. Plants need as much light as they can get indoors, so anything that gets in the way of that is only going to hurt the growth in the long run. These white spots are a real pain to get rid of. We're talking hours of tediously wiping leaves and no one in their right mind wants that. Basically, misting is a cheeky shortcut, and like most cheeky shortcuts, it doesn't really tackle the main needs of your plants. If you're trying to increase humidity in your home, a quick spritz just won't cut it. You'd have to mist your plants a bunch of times an hour just to achieve a slight increase in moisture levels, and even then it wouldn't come close to the high humidity home tropical plants actually need. So, what about other humidity increasing hacks? If you've ever placed a tray of water with pebbles under your plant like this, hoping to create a mini tropical paradise, then I hate to break it to you, but it's not doing much of anything at all. I'll explain why, but first, let's have a chat about today's video sponsor, Squarespace. 
If you're looking to build a beautiful website, start an online store, or even create a portfolio to showcase your work, then Squarespace has you covered. With their easy to use templates and all in one platform, you can create a stunning website in minutes. And the beauty is there's absolutely no coding required. Plus they offer powerful analytics and marketing tools to help you grow your online presence. They've even got AI to help you create your website. Head to squarespace.com for your free trial today. And when you're ready to launch, use code Sheffield for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, doing this is about effective as leaving a glass of water out and expecting it to turn your living room into a rainforest. Humidity trays are based on the idea that as the water in the tray evaporates, it raises the humidity in the immediate area around your plants. The theory does sound solid, but in practice, the increase in humidity is so tiny that it's hardly worth the effort. Indoor homes are notorious for being dry, especially if you're running heaters or air conditioning units, and the small tray of water under the plant just isn't enough to make a meaningful difference. I've tested this myself, and even with a humidity meter, the results were disappointing. I diligently placed a tray with pebbles and water under my calafea, thinking it would help during the winter months. After a couple of days, I checked the humidity levels right above the plant and nothing. The meter barely budged. In fact, the humidity was the same as it was without the tray. The truth is, water in those trays evaporates too slowly to make any real impact on the overall humidity around your plants. Tropical plants like ferns, calafeas and orchids need consistent humidity, ideally around 50 to 80%. A humidity tray, even placed under a single plant, isn't going to provide anywhere near that level. You need a much larger source of water and a lot more evaporation to achieve that kind of moisture. In the jungle, humidity is naturally high because of the sheer number of plants, you know, because it's a jungle and all, and water vapour constantly rising from the soil, rivers and rainfall. Trying to replicate this with a small tray of pebbles and water indoors is like trying to water a whole garden with a thimble. So what about grouping plants together? The idea is that plants release moisture through transpiration and if you bunch them up, you'll create a tropical paradise, right? Well, not so much. Yeah, plants do release moisture through their leaves, but indoors it's just not enough to make a difference. You're not in a rainforest here. You're in the living room with dry air from radiators, fans, and maybe even AC. Each plant only gives off a small amount of moisture and grouping them together doesn't magically make them transpire more. So unless you're living in a greenhouse, that tiny bit of moisture won't raise the humidity in any significant way. I thought I could make a cozy, humid corner by clustering 15 plants together. I even put a humidity meter next to them. And guess what? The humidity barely changed. It was basically the same as the rest of my dry heated home. No magical mini jungle, just dry air and disappointed plants. Plus, there is the threat of pests and disease spreading from one plant to the other from being too close together. Even if you group them, the scale is still too small. You need an entire jungle of plants to start raising the humidity even slightly. And no, five monsteras and a couple of thirds ain't gonna cut it. So, humidifiers. Everyone seems to think they're the holy grail for keeping indoor plants happy. You see them all the time, nestled up against the wall with a plant or two sat next to or above them. The truth is though, it's not as simple as flicking on a machine and watching your plants thrive. I wish it was. In fact, humidifiers might be more of a pain than they're worth. They sound like a dream, you set it up, plug it in and boom, your plants are living their best tropical lives. Except it's not quite that easy. I've tried this and the reality is humidifiers only raise the humidity in a very limited area. So much so that I ended up throwing mine out. You'd think the room would feel like a lush rainforest, wouldn't you? But no. The humidity barely goes beyond the immediate area. So unless your plant is sitting right next to the humidifier, it's not going to feel the love. And let's be real. How many plants can you fit in that tiny humidified bubble? Not your entire plant collection, I'll tell you that much. Well, I struggle with my 200 plants anyway. Now, plants need consistent levels of humidity to thrive, not a roller coaster of moisture. Most humidifiers, especially the cheap ones, don't keep humidity steady. So, what you get is a quick boost in moisture, followed by a quick drop when the humidifier runs out of water or turns off. It's like feeding your plant a buffet one day and then starving it the next. This can actually stress out your plants. Too much humidity, too fast, can lead to fungal issues or rot, while too little leaves you back with crispy leaves. And don't get me started on the mold. Humidifiers can make the air so moist that you start growing mold on the walls, windowsills, or even the soil of your plants. Once that mold shows up, it's a whole new battle. 
Suddenly, your home starts to feel like a damp basement instead of a plant paradise. Alrighty then, let's tackle one of the most overhyped plant hacks out there, putting your plants in the bathroom. It sounds genius, right? Bathrooms are humid and plants love humidity. Problem solved. Well, not quite. Sure, bathrooms get steamy during showers in the morning, but the rest of the day, they're just as dry as any other room. Unless you're planning on showering 24 seven, your plants aren't benefiting much from that occasional steam. Even with a shower, the humidity spike is too brief to really help. Plus, let's not forget about the light. Most bathrooms have tiny windows, or worse, none at all. Even if your plant gets a brief humidity boost during your morning shower, it still needs decent light to thrive. Without enough light, your plants will get leggy, pale, and start to decline. I know we're all guilty of shuffling our plants around, trying out new hacks, or moving them closer to that trendy humidifier. But honestly, the best thing you can do for your plants is to find the perfect spot and then just leave them to settle. Plants are creatures of habit. They don't like being moved around all the time. Every time you shift the plant, it has to readjust and that can stress it out, the poor thing. You might notice droopy leaves, yellowing or worse, no growth at all. Patience is key. When your plant is in the right spot and getting the care it needs, just give it time. And as I always bleat on in my videos, light really is the holy grail. If your plant doesn't get the right amount of light, no amount of extra humidity will help. Once you find that sweet spot where the lighting conditions are just right, then stick to it. They don't need to move around like furniture. When your plant settles in, it will reward you with strong growth and hopefully fewer problems. The brutal truth is that not every plant in your home is going to thrive, no matter how hard you try. Venus flytraps absolutely hate my home. I'd love to have a few dotted around, but whenever I bring them home, they die within a few weeks so I don't put myself through the pain of trying to keep them in my house anymore. If your space is naturally dry, then trying to keep a humidity-loving calafea alive is like trying to swim with a brick. Do yourself a favor by choosing plants that are suited to your home's conditions. If you've got a super dry environment, then go for succulent snake plants or ZZ plants. They thrive in lower humidity and don't need a tropical jungle to stay happy. There are a few tips and tricks to take your plant from ugly duckling to magnificent swan. And a bunch of my favorite ones are included in this video here. So make sure you click it to watch and I'll see you there.